Good morning everyone. We are just leaving Argon, beginning a new day, another day on the uh, French canals. And we're about to go over a lovely aqueduct. And then we have four locks in a row and then onward for another day in the sun in France. Life is good. Meteorologists say this June heat wave will possibly break previous national all-time records in France before Friday. Right, well, we're cranky because it's hot, which we've known for some hours. And then Nick, Nick kept on saying, oh, I wonder how hot it actually is. And I was like, I don't want to know how hot it actually is. It would just make me feel more hot because it is sweltering. But anyway, he disobeyed me as per usual. And dog. <laughs> yeah, a very badly trained dog. And uh, we've established that it's 39 degrees in the shade. And in the sun, it's just going to keep going up. Yeah, we need. We're, we're waiting. We're waiting to see what it says. It. Oh, yeah, it's warm. Speaking of, babe, if you're sitting, can I have some ice in my um, drink thing? I mean, all I can say is. Thank God we have that ice machine. We also saw a um, 7,000 BTU standalone air conditioning unit at the supermarket yesterday. And it was small, it was smaller than our fan cooler. And oh God, it was so tempting. But it was like 170 euros and we had no way of actually getting it back to the boat apart from just like carrying it on our backs for, I don't know, a while. So we said, no, 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 we'll just tough it out. And you know, hopefully in a few days time we'll be A on the Atlantic and B the worst of the heat wave would have passed. So we just have to suffer through a couple of days of yeah. <laughs> I just saw the temperature gauge. I'll let you know what it says in a minute. We'll just wait for it to hopefully stop rising. Anyway, thank God for the ice machine. It's basically saving our lives right now and all I can say is that if this body of water weren't like a murky, not even murky, like an opaque greeny brown, uh, both Nick and I would be diving headfirst into it because the only thing, well, definitely not the only thing that's bad about this, but one of the many things that I don't like about heat is also not being able to go for a swim. So in a few days we'll be able to go for a swim in the Atlantic Ocean and boy, it will be really sweet. So that was the last lock before hopefully, fingers crossed, our stop for tonight. I think we're only about 10 kilometers away from it now and we're both very, very ready to, thank you, turn it off the engine and to just sit. I am hot, it is hot. It is 100, it's been 100, 120 degrees depending on where we are on the boat. So this just in, it is apparently 49 degrees in the sun. I've been trying to tell Nick that it's not 49 degrees, that the thermometer is faulty. And he assures me that it can't possibly be faulty, it's definitely 49 degrees. On starboard, on port, there's a white thing and I can't see if it's a power supply or not. Therese, let's just go alongside the capitanery. Get a ball fender and stick it on the stern, I'm gonna reverse in next to this boat. So you're gonna to need to be on port side. Basically, come back here a little bit, yep. grab the boat next door, and walk us in. Now just keep the line fender high. Walk 
yeah last time we were moored stern tree like this with our mast hanging off the end obviously it obstructs the walkway so we're told that we have to move but yeah there's nowhere to move to so i hope that they're okay with that we're only here until like eight o'clock tomorrow morning so Whew. I missed the bit where you sexily swished your wet hair around. Well, that's quite clearly a case of tubby bastard one, 45 degrees of summer temperature nil. Oh, blimey, O'Reilly. Come on. Yes. So the lady said that we can stay. Well, basically, I'm not sure if she's seen our boat. <laughs> Baby said, how long is your boat? I went, yeah, 11 meters 90. And she was like, oh, it's like that. And I was going to say, have you seen our mast? But then I thought, well, if I say that, sure. she will make us move. They still may, win, may make us move, but I figured that for a night it's not a problem. You wouldn't think so. Huh? You wouldn't think so. Well, they may make us move, but you know, we're paid now. Yeah. It's too hot to be on the boat because the sun has moved to the point where the cockpit is no longer in shade. We went to see the bar. It looked like a really pretty little bar here, but it closed at six and it's like 10 past six. So that was a shame. However, we have beer of our own. What was a wife beater? Oh <laughs> yeah. Nick bought like, what? Yeah, 24 bottles of cellar yesterday, the day before. Got plenty of beer. Plenty of wine. Plenty of wine. Plenty of ice. Plenty of ice. And sausages. Sausages. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just chilling out in the lovely grounds of this port. It's a very hot evening, but it's 37 degrees inside the boat as well, which is has surpassed our record by a total of three degrees temperature inside the boat. I also think you should advise people, or we should advise people, about the cost of these places yeah, compared to marinas. Yeah. So <clears throat> these, I mean, it's just it just shows that the marine industry is such a massive ripoff, right? This place is stunning, right? It's got facilities, it's got a bar, it's got a shop, it's got really beautiful grounds, um, it's got like laundry facilities, shower facilities. For our boat with water and electricity, twelve euros, mm. so essentially twelve bucks. Well, last night we didn't even pay for the berth; we just paid for the electricity. Oh, it's free. Hopefully July and August will be at anchor off the lovely French islands. Eating my body weight in more fruit and drinking my body weight in rosé wine. That's my intention. I'll be living on small salads and mineral water. <laughs> Good morning from the Canal du Garonne once again. We are still here and uh, yeah we had a well a warm night at least I found it warm Nick was like cuddled up in bed like it was you know kind of midwinter layers on and blankets wrapped around him and god knows what he's re he's wearing a jumper right now evidence evidence of this madness oh. it's not cold at all we have about 30 35 kilometers to do today and we got an early start because we weren't anywhere near a lock so we we're able to get off nice and early before eight o'clock that's the lock is it so we're just approaching the first lock of the day now it is quarter to nine so we have 15 minutes before it opens so that should be excellent timing for once and yeah it's shaping up to be another very very hot day today is apparently the hottest day um, and yesterday, frankly, was hot enough, so I can't say I'm looking forward to it, but Mr. Fabry is, uh, couldn't be happier. Or could you? He likes it. Well, look how, you know, look at the, our view. I don't know if you can see that, actually. Hang on, let me try and see if I can. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, we've got some nice, uh, wheat. What is that, wheat field? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Golden ears of wheat. <laughs> I'm such a city girl. <laughs> it is beautiful.
Do you know what is causing that vibration? No. I think it settles itself. I mean, maybe we may have the same round the crop. Normally it shakes itself free. And this is why we've got the bloody great rope cutter on it. Mm. Yeah, there's something, there's something around. I think it's same round the crop. There's some sort of debris. Yeah, it's same round the crop. Yeah, I didn't like that. No? Didn't like that. You... Just the same stuff that we were dragging through back there. Yeah. So yeah, a little tip to little tip for all those who get stuff around their props. Into neutral and then into reverse. And normally just the reverse screwing motion because if it's wrapped round, it, it can't unwrap. But if you put the reverse screw on, it tends to normally unwrap itself. Yeah, it's fine again. Okay, well, let me just do a Q&A, a quick Q&A. We've spent a month on the canals. Describe them in three words. What? Well, there you go, there's a question. It's like an interview question. Um, they, I think, challenging. Yes. Although easy. <laughs> challenging, easy, and mid-level challenging. <laughs> All right, go Somewhere in the middle. All right, well done. So there you go, a synopsis of canal life for Theresa Vanderlyn. Well, they have been, uh, it's been very easy um, in a lot of ways. It's not as tiring as sailing. It's, no, it's easy that you put something down and it just it, you know, you're on a level surface all the time. Yes. So you don't have to worry about things falling over. Yes. We've been able to have a lovely basil plant. Yes. Um, it's been challenging in that you know we've had to learn how to do all the locks and physically, uh, especially when we we're in the Canadian Media, we're going up. That was that was a challenge yep. physically. A good challenge, I like it. Um, I think it's been amazing. I'm eating. Um, three words. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, challenging. And easy. And easy, yeah. So, alright, well that's, yeah. <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> we have met some amazing people. We have seen some amazing boats as well. Because this is, you know, I'm a bit of a boat perv. I always kind of look at other people's boats and go, ooh, isn't that nice? But because we've moved into a different kind of demographic, yeah. we have seen some amazing, amazing barges, canal boats, and I would say that we've both discussed this, not now in our lives, but at some point over the next, before I get to 110, this mm -hmm. is going to be part of something we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, we're going to do this again. But probably like in 10 years, because it is just too nice. Yeah. We've met some amazing people, we've yeah. met some really, we've met some good friends, we've met some interesting people, we've met, we've seen some really lovely barges inside, we've seen hotel barges. Yeah. That's an interesting concept. Um, <laughs> Not something that we would do. No, but... four people, fully catered, a week on the canals, thirty-four thousand US dollars. Yeah. 34,000, not including flights, but you get food, obviously. It's a lot shallower than the stated depths. Yeah. Um, we have been, even with our keel almost fully up, we have been down to at some point 80 centimeters, so that's two and a half foot under the hull in the middle of the canal and we have dragged all the way through. Um, so it is shallow, um, 
other things I would say that there are kind of like occasional branches under the water which give you a little jolt as they yeah. catch the hull yeah. and I would say that overall um, I am very 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 pleased that we have a skegged propeller yeah. um, we met someone who had ripped their prop off However, uh, overall, this is one of the best things we have ever done. Absolutely. Closing statement from you with one minute left of my memory card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're so professional. <laughs> um, it's been an incredible experience. I think that it's something that it's just whetted our appetite to do more of this in the future. Yeah. I think for the moment, I am really excited about getting out to the Atlantic again and getting blue water under our hull. And I mean, it's been really hot, so I've been kind of craving being at anchor and going for swims and that kind of thing, like going to the beach, but, um, and also I know what's waiting for us in the Atlantic in, in France, and it's just some of the best cruising yeah. that we've ever done, like some of our favourite places on Earth uh, are waiting for us when we get out, so I'm super excited about that. But yeah, as for the waterways, it's something that we are going to do, what's that? You've got eight seconds left. We're going to do it again in the future, <laughs> for sure. Alright, on with the day. Is it really eight seconds? Yeah. I have to say that so far, in terms of the temperature today, it's been pretty comfortable because we are on these gorgeous you know, tree-lined stretches of the canal and these trees are just, I mean, you can barely see blue sky above you. <laughs> they provide a lot of shade and it's actually been pretty comfortable. So it's been nice so far. It's only 12 o'clock. The worst is yet to come, however, I'm remaining optimistic. We realised that we could if we really, really wanted to get to the last lock tonight, which is a strange thought, but I think on balance, because this afternoon is going to be so hot and we also have a lot of work to do, um, then we're going to just divide it into the two days. So we'll do a short day tomorrow morning as well, or a short passage tomorrow, hopefully get to the final lock kind of just after lunch. And then I don't know when we're going to go through the lock into the river. We have yet to determine that. It depends on the tides, it depends on lock keeper, it depends on a few things. So we shall see. But for today, it's just been incredibly serene. The birds have been chirping away all day. We've seen, I think, one or two other boats on the canal underway. And it's been shady and relatively cool and it's obviously a part of the canal that just isn't isn't used very much. There's very few people here. Should we just go to the top of the quay and then... No, no, no. No, it's fine. I just mean we'll, we'll position the boat forward so that someone can come behind us if they want to. So the um, electricity pedestal works on tokens, which we need to get from the town hall, which is just around the corner. So Nick, you're off to get the tokens? Yeah, it's lunchtime though, so I may have come back tokenless. Do those tokens that we have fit? <laughs> they look different shapes. It's yeah. strange actually, I've looked at them all. I've got a heady little connection, but they're all they're very all slightly different. different. Yeah, well, they probably do that to make sure that you don't I know, buy cheap electricity one place and then put it in somewhere. Yeah. All right, good luck. It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It's an algae bloom because of all the hot weather lately. Babe, I can see we getting sucked into the bow thruster. Don't use the bow thruster. Yeah, there's stuff like there's something around the prop as we speak. I think we've got an engine problem, babe. No water, babe. Just smoke. Not enough. There's a lot of white smoke. There shouldn't be white smoke. They're so close to the end. I know, babe. I know. 